Hello guys and welcome back to my channel Civil Construction and Tutor and in this video I will show you how to compute time period using relic method. So as per NBC 105 2020 we have two methods of computing time period that is relic method and another is empirical equations and the lesser value of the two shall be adopted for determining the design action. So one is the relic method you can see the formula over here and the other is empirical equation which is simply t1 is equal to kt into s to the power 3 by 4. Uh, we have already uh, computed the time period for the building that I have designed in the previous videos using this equation. So it is simply height of building and the coefficient. So coefficient is different for different types of system 0.075 for the moment resisting concrete frame which is our case for today similarly 0.085 for steel frame and other things so as being the height of the building so we have an excel sheet over here for computing the time period so for this building the location is in Kathmandu type of structure is moment resisting concrete frame type of building reinforced moment resisting frame for Kathmandu the seismic zone factor Z will be 0.35 and being a commercial building the importance factor is 1.25 and height of building is right click over here and the top is 28.65 and soil type D so for reinforced moment resisting frame the time period will be this because the 1.25 terms come from this clause that is the time period computed from clause 5.1.2 that is empirical equation shall be increased by a factor of 1.25 so here you can see 1.25 times 0.075 into 28.65 to the power 0.75 this gives time period as 1.161 from this time period we will compute the horizontal base shear coefficient as we have to define an earthquake load pattern in e tabs so that we can compute the terms that is required for relic method that is ti is equal to 2 pi under root summation of wi di square by z into fi di so basically di is the elastic horizontal displacement at level i fi is the lateral force at level i g is the acceleration due to gravity i is the level under consideration n is the number of levels and wi being the seismic weight at level i so this is the excel sheet that will be used for computing the time period for computing the time period simply this table is sufficient but to make a cross check with the data that we are taking from e tabs i have made this table also so basically uh, the terms that are required here can be directly taken from e tabs but what i will do is i'll just take the base shear and depending upon this exponent related k i will distribute the force that is the vertical distribution of lateral force will be done manually and we'll input that value in this table and compute the time period for analysis we will be considering base shear from ETFs exponent related to the structural time period k uh, seismic weight and uh, story that is the elevation of each story and elastic horizontal displacement but before that we have to define a earthquake load pattern so define load patterns and uh, here you define eqx and it will be seismic and we will be considering user coefficient method that is auto lateral load add new load modify lateral load for eqx we will be considering x direction base shear coefficient we computed as 0.164 and k is 1.3305 eccentricity ratio is 0.1 for nbc105 and the story range from base to top Similarly, y direction because the displacement may be different in y direction. Add new load, modify, select y direction only. Seismic base shear coefficient will be 0.164. This will be 1. Okay, and this will be 0.1. Okay. So now we can run and we will consider the required data. So the analysis is complete. Now let us go to the excel sheet that I have prepared for relic method. So as I said we will require base shear, exponent related, seismic weight, 
uh, elevation of the story level and elastic horizontal displacement and I have already said that this value can be directly taken from e -tabs, but I have calculated this manually to make you understand the importance of value k because the last the force distribution you can find this in code also so here you can see the vertical distribution of seismic force fi this is the component i just use this formula for calculating the lateral force you can simply understand this this is the base shear so it depends upon the value k and the value of k ranges from 1 to 2 depending on the time period that is 0 0.5 to 2.5 second for now the value of t is 1.161 and the value corresponding to it of k is 0 1.3305 so the force distribution will be with respect to value k so let us take this value from ecaps so go to display here you have show tables and in tables you will have to select load pattern definition and from this we will get the base shear, co uh, base shear value Similarly, for the mass, that is the seismic weight, we will get from this mass summary by story. And for the displacement, go to joint output here in displacement, we will select story max over average displacement. Okay. So, firstly, we will get the base shear that is from load pattern definition. Let us copy this and I will paste it over here. Similarly, exponent related to this is 1.3305 and wi so this is in kg because here we will get the value in kg so you can see here select this copy in y direction it will be same the mass will be same in either direction and paste it over here and i have merged the formatting and this is the elevation of the story level so you will get this so before that let me put over here this is the elastic horizontal displacement and this can be taken from this and we will consider the output case eqx for the first this top to 1f that is first floor so this is the maximum displacement let us select this and paste it over here now the other things that is remaining here is the elevation of the story so for this close this and right click over here add or modify grids and select this value control c copy and paste it over here so other things are simple calculation for calculating this uls that is the lateral force distribution i have used this formula you can simply understand so w h i so simply hi to the power 1.33 wi hi so this into this done so the conversion of unit is very important so this is in kg and this has to be computed in terms of kilo newton so i have converted this value kg into kilo newton so basically this is this weight into 0 0.0098 to convert this into kilo newton and wi h square is simply this two value and we can get the value 128.2240 and by adding all this value with the adjacent story the value at the base shall be equal to the base shear so 11938 11938 and you can check this in e tabs so close this and go to display story response plot and in maximum story select auto lateral loads to storage and this will be eqx so here you can see the maximum base shear to 881 which occurs at the sixth floor and in our case also the value at sixth floor is 2881 sixth floor and similarly at top it is 128.4 so you can see it is 128.4 over you can check over value here 128 so in this way we can cross check our calculation so i've made this table now for calculating the time period, we will use this equation wi in terms of kilo newton. So, converting this value from kg to kilo newton, this is the elastic horizontal displacement in mm, and this is converted into meter, and this will be di square. Don't get confused with the value, 
it is simply wi di square we don't have to use this exponent related to time period and this is the force that is the lateral force at the story level and this is equal to the table from this and simply now it is multiplication these two terms will be used for calculating the time period that is summation of these two parameters so it is nothing but 2 pi into under root summation of wid square by gravity into FIDI. So we got the value as 1.22 second, but the value computed from the empirical relation was 1.161. So we'll use the smaller value for the design action. So I hope this video helped you and if it did help, do like and comment in the video and make sure you subscribe our channel. Thank you.